Woo! <laughs> Y'all who are watching this video, you're the real MVPs because this is a. Uh... <laughs> yeah, worked out, didn't shower. Just, is. Well, you know? I showered. I just didn't wash my hair because <laughs> bleach damage. <laughs> <laughs> Not like from the bleach, but just because you shower and bleach. What the fuck? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> That's how I get my. So my skin is so soft. My <laughs> glowing <laughs> Caucasian skin. What the fuck? Do you imagine bathing in bleach? That'd be fucking no. terrible. No. <laughs> Immediately. No. Set me on fire before you ever do that to me. No. It'd be awful. Anyways, welcome back. Episode 91. Mm-hmm. Ba ba bum. I don't know why I did that. It's not even gonna be a bad one. I don't know. <laughs> no why I did that. I'm also okay. excited to hear the difference that people think that episode 90 sounds versus before from your change of microphone so far. Oh yes, that would be 90. Yep. But I got confused. I was like, didn't we just delete that? <laughs> I was like, we just recorded why we deleted it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm interested as well. Um, I did hear what you were talking about, how it sounds a little echoey, but that was probably, that's probably better than me blowing something to your Dude, when I tell you, when I do the editing, like it shows the voice lines, you know, when yeah. you see things, you were like a steady line and that's never been that way. <laughs> it's always been like this big. And then mine oh, was like this. <laughs> okay. So this just might be it. Good old free <laughs> Apple <laughs> headphones versus this hundred and some dollar <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Fuck me. Right. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> so today we are starting not start. Well, we're starting talking about the actual way to form better habit mm -hmm. habits and reverse them. However, this is part two in the series of talking about atomic habits. Yes. So last time we left off talking about habit feedback loops. So now I want to make sure. Yeah. I would just want to start off just the um, reframe again of habits matter because they help you determine the type of person you wish to be. Mm -hmm. So they're helping you form this identity, this sense of self. And again, that's a great, not again, I don't know if I said this last time, but that is a great way to build up your self-confidence, self-esteem, because mm -hmm. you are internally validating yourself after having said, okay, I want to be like this person, this type of person. So I'm acting as if I am this type of person. Example you know, I want to lose weight and work out instead of, I want to lose weight and work out. It's, I am an athlete. How does an mm -hmm. athlete behave? So then every time I behave like an athlete where I'm working out and feeling my body, I'm resting when needs, when rest needs to be taken because athletes don't work out seven goddamn days a week. Let's, let's remember that rest is necessary and rest can look like all different types of things. It doesn't have to be completely no movement. It could be stretching. It could be, you know, walking, whatever mm -hmm. that it is, but again, they rest. So when you're acting in those <clears throat> habits, that's voting for yourself, right? Talking about those votes. We're trying to win the majority of the votes. It's not a unanimous vote. So that's building up that sense of self because you're showing yourself, okay, I'm saying that I want to be this type of person. I'm behaving in that way. I can trust myself because I'm doing those things. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. <clears throat> So habits are the channel through which you develop the deepest beliefs about yourself. Again, if I believe this and I'm acting as such, that's just this reinforcement. So how to build better habits in four steps. So I'm just going to do the overview and then we'll talk about the first two today. So oh, I saw you do that and I thought my thing. No, off. sorry. I had an itch on my face. <laughs> yeah. Don't itch your fucking face. Okay. I'm sorry. Hands up. Hands I'll just up rub it on my fucking microphone next to my <laughs> <laughs> cat. Did you imagine? I was like, what? My face itches. <laughs> well, like the people who scratch their backs on things in public. <laughs> that gives me the biggest it. Bro, I get if it's your house or your, your car chair, but like in public, what the fuck are you doing? Like in a booth at a restaurant, dude's like rubbing his back <laughs> on the side of your seat. Well, like when malls were a thing, I remember being a teenager and guys are like, <laughs> like, what? Take your dead skin somewhere else. Oh my God. Take your dead skin somewhere else. <laughs> Fucking gross. It's so gross. <sighs> Anyways. Oh, my cheeks hurt from laughing. 
<laughs> talk about how to break that bad habit. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get it together. Oh man, you guys are in for a treat. Uh, I just realized I didn't I didn't eat all morning, did a bunch of shit, just had coffee, and then I just ate before we started recording. So the sugars are gonna spike. Gonna... <laughs> get to a giggle fit. Oh bitch. I, this is so such a sidebar, but I have to say this. One of our listeners was listening to the episode where we talk about um, being friends with <coughs> um, your your significant other being friends yeah. with opposite sex. We talk about crushes and stuff like that. And I was like, no one probably knows him. She fucking knew him. She messaged me. She was like, I know him. And I was like, oh my God. I just didn't think. I mean, like, he obviously is a person and people yeah. knew him. But I was like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't tell him things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 36 years old. I'm like, please don't share that with him. <sighs> okay, oh we're getting God. back on track right the fuck now. <laughs> okay, how to build better habits in four steps. So like I said, I'll go through the four and then we'll focus on the first two. So the first step is the cue. So these trigger the brain to initiate behavior. So it is a visual cue. The second is craving. So the motivational force behind the habit without craving, there's no reason to act. So Mm -hmm. that's the purpose of number two. Three, the response. Actual habit you perform, thought or action. If a particular action requires more physical effort than you're willing to expend, you won't do it. Correct. More about that later. Mm -hmm. And then step four. The reward and goal of every habit serves two purposes to satisfy the craving and teach us which actions are worthy of continuing Mm -hmm. more on that in another episode. (laughs) So habits don't restrict your freedom. They give you freedom. This is a, I think a giant myth that until you start structuring your day and having routine, you will operate in this myth. For if, sure. And thinking of like, no, if I'm so regimented and I'm so routine, there's no time for spontaneity. No, what your brain without putting it on paper is framing what spontaneity is, is procrastination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just want to leave this open space in case something comes up when it's like, that's not fucking reality. That's not going to happen. If you get mm-hmm. the shit that you need to do done and out of the way and or suction it off at night, depending on what your life looks like, get it and done, get it done out of the way. It's not pigeonholing you. It's giving you the chance for freedom and the productivity that releases the dopamine in your brain of having done things. Yep. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So habits don't pigeonhole you. And if the habit fails in any of the four steps, you won't stick to it. So if the visual cue isn't strong enough, not going to work. So these four steps are a constant feedback loop. So you can split them into two phases. Problem, which is cue and craving, when you know you need a change, and then the solution, which is response reward, when you make the action or take the action. All behavior is driven by the desire to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. That makes sense? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Steps one and two. Those are the two we'll focus on now. So these are the four laws of behavior change. First two, the cue and the craving. So first, the cue. His his um, little like. Um, phrase for this is make it obvious. So in order to start building a better habit, you need to make it obvious. It needs to be visual so that your brain sees it and wants to act on it. Mm -hmm. So this is pointing and calling out the behavior and it raises the level of awareness. So it makes the unconscious conscious. Does that make sense? Yes. So this is where he's asking you to do a habit scorecard. So we talked about this a little bit in the last episode. <clears throat> so he talks about making a list of your daily habits, examples like waking up, checking phone, shutting off alarm, going to the bathroom, and then identify if those habits are good, bad, or neutral. So put a plus, a minus, or an equal sign next to it. You can get a, a score, a scorecard template at atomichabits.com slash scorecard. So it's all about the long term in this situation. Does this behavior reflect who I want to be? So we have to observe first. This is the same thing of talking about being mindful 
and challenging cognitive errors. You need to be aware that you're doing the cognitive errors mm -hmm. before you can start challenging them. Goes back to walking the middle path. I'm positive we've talked about that either on a PS episode or actually talked about it in an episode. Walking the middle path as a DBT skill. This balance between acceptance and change. You first must accept something before you can change it. You have mm -hmm. to be aware of it before you can change it. Yep. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So we observe first and then we speak out loud. So example, if you are seeing that they're, wait, I wanna make sure that's not going into the flip. I feel like that's going into the flip, so I'm gonna save that. I was gonna say, I can give you an example of what I do for cues. Yes, yes. Okay. So one thing that I do and have done literally since I started my journey of working out in 2015 is I put my workout clothes in my bathroom. So it is literally the first thing I see when I sit down mm -hmm. in the toilet, like that's mm -hmm. in my light of sight. Yep. Yep. There's no negotiating. It's like, Oh, I have to work out this morning. So my clothes are right there. I put them out yes. the night before, like that has been a foolproof plan this whole yes. time. For some people it's, I put it in a gym bag and I change before I leave the office. So I'm already dressed when I go home to work out or before I even go to the gym. Right. Like it's this and visual mm -hmm. reminder of what you need to do and taking it the step further putting the gym bag on your bed so mm -hmm. that before you go to bed you see the gym bag it's in your way yep. so you can't ignore it you pack the gym bag and then you put it by the front door mm -hmm. you put it in front of the front door and or put it in your car if you, you yep. just go straight out to putting it in your car so this is those are that's the actual visual cue of mm -hmm. of packing it the night before to then be able to make it easier. I yep. used to do the same thing of putting my workout clothes in the bathroom until my habit was already set of like, okay, this is how I want to, um, this is how I want to behave. So then now I, they're just in the closet in the, um, office. I'm in the room. Why was I like, where am I? <laughs> They're in the closet, in the office, and I know that when I wake up, I immediately go turn on the coffee pot. I, and then I, after I go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, turn on the coffee pot, and then come in here and change. Mm -hmm. So that's already set now as my habit and routine because I was operating in that way for six months until it was already set. And now mm -hmm. it's, I have to, like that. It's just a non-negotiable that I work out in the morning. No matter what that workout looks like, again, and I'm not talking about the effort, I'm talking about the consistency, because mm -hmm. that's the most important. So some days <clears throat> my body is willing to show up for an hour and a half, an hour, solid, hard lifting workout. And some days it's like, I'm doing a walk today mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do a meditation because that's what I can afford for today. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I don't pick up my workout clothes, what I find myself doing, especially like on Saturdays, if I sometimes don't pick it out, like mm -hmm. I'm spending 10 minutes picking out workout clothes. Yes. What the fuck are you I did doing? It today. Just I put literally shit did it today. On. Who fucking cares. Yeah. I but that's part of it is like, I have to just have it already picked out. So there's not a question that I just put it on and I go, you know, Mel Robbins talks about this in the five second rule. Mm -hmm. And that came out before atomic habits, where you, if you give your brain even a second, it's going yep. to kill that idea. It's yep. going to sit and spiral and be like, you know what, actually, and then you, it's like, well, what am I going to wear? What one's going to look but good? What I socks should I put on? Because I don't know what shoes are <laughs> like, what? Exactly. Whereas five, four, three, two for Mel Robbins, <clears throat> the five second Mel Robbins, um, idea is you count down from five, five, four, three, two, one, doing that, literally counting aloud, doing that activates your prefrontal cortex, gets you out of that emotional mm -hmm. brain, or, um, I don't know what she calls it, but it's basically your emotional brain. Yeah. And then gets your prefrontal cortex back online, your thinking brain, and then you just act, yep. you immediately change the chemistry. Mm -hmm. So you could also add that into this if you like. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I guess, I guess what he's saying when he says observe first, like speak it out loud. So again, like, um, I don't know why I keep saying so again. So I think the example was, is that there's cookies. Um, there was cookies on the counter or in a cookie jar. And so he would speak hit the, the um, action out loud of like, <clears throat> example, I'm going to eat a cookie and I don't need it. His words, not mine. So mm -hmm. I'm going to eat a cookie and I don't need it. So that we're verbally saying these things out loud, because if our, our goal is to, if the goal, because again, he talks a lot about, um, if you didn't listen to the first episode in this series, this book surrounds breaking down negative habits like smoking, overeating, things like that, and building better ones of like working out and blah, blah, blah. So that's what this will be heavily focused on. You could literally use it for anything. So please mm -hmm. know that we're not just solely focusing on <clears throat> eating and working out, just the easiest. 
for examples. So he talks about observe first, like, again, be mindful. You start to learn that you're doing these things. Mm -hmm. And like, example, I'm going to eat a cookie and I don't need it. So he was talking, I think in the book, he had already eaten dinner and like he, he was full. He wasn't hungry. It wasn't any of these things. It was just like, Oh, I saw a cookie and I'm going to eat it now. Mm -hmm. Um, so the two most obvious cues are time and location. He says, so an implementation intention is we are increasing the probability of you actually forming the habit. This is what we're talking about of making it obvious. Steph putting her clothes in the bathroom to be able to visually see them is an implementation intention. Mm -hmm. I am intentionally implementing this new step in my routine because the visual cue will then trigger me to act and put the clothes on after I'm done going to the bathroom in the morning. Does that make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. So he says for an implementation intention, it's I will behavior at time in location. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I will, well, for me, since I put them out the night before, but I will put my clothes out at night before I go to bed in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, or you could like flip it in the sense of, um, I will put my clothes yeah. on. Yeah. No, 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 no. Exactly what you said. Sorry. Should have probably, probably reviewed this first. So exactly what you said. I will set my clothes out at 9 p.m. before I go to bed in my bathroom. So then what we were going to do is habit stack. So it's a simple plan to overhaul your habits. The best way to add a new habit is to pay attention to your current ones and then add it. So after I go to the bathroom in the morning, I will get dressed in my workout clothes. Mm-hmm. So the habit is already there, whether you view it as a habit or not, that's how you, we have to switch the thinking of going to the bathroom in the morning is a habit. You mm-hmm. do that every morning. So that, that is a, a current habit that you know that you're going to do. That's not yeah. breaking away from anything. So after I go to the bathroom, I will put on my new clothes. <clears throat> So we're tying, we're tying the desired behavior to something you already do the benefit. You will always then have a game plan. There will Mm -hmm. always be this next step already figured out for you. You're creating a non-negotiable routine. Mm -hmm. Stack with a cue that matches how much you want to do a new habit. So he broke it down in this chart of habits you do daily, all of the things that just happened to you. Use this to find out where you should add a habit. Okay. So he talks about like stacking habits with things that already happen to you and things that you already do. So some of the things that are going to happen are just natural and a part of life. So like the sun, the sun rising, um, well, some are natural and then some are just part of life. So the sun rising, he puts down like a phone call or a text message or things that you need to do versus the habits we're already do, doing daily of waking up, eating breakfast, brushing teeth. So he has on his website, a way to help. If you don't know where to start stacking things and don't know where to start adding in new habits, you can go to atomichabits.com slash habit stacking. He has examples on there that can help walk you through of what you need to do. Again, I think that when you are doing the habit tracker and writing everything down, if we are liking the positive habits that we have on there and they're things that are really solidified already, that is where I would try to start stacking the new habits. Mm -hmm. That makes sense Mm -hmm. because those things are set. There's no changing it. Okay. So still in continuing with this, this first step. Yeah. Still in continuing with this first step, your environment matters than your matters more than your motivation. So every habit is context dependent. The most powerful sensory receptor is sight. Visual cues are the catalyst to our behavior. So how to design your environment to success. Creating obvious visual cues. Again, what we've talked about. Taking my workout clothes, putting them in the bathroom. So when I wake up and go to the bathroom, it's the first thing I see. Medications, vitamins, What are these things that you need to do? So you take that visual cue and put it somewhere where you know that you're going to be. So for example, if you take um, medications and or vitamins at night and you have the seven day organizer, that should be on the nightstand. That should be right there in the nightstand and 
if you don't have a habit of having water with you all the time, scatter water throughout your house. He talks about that. Until the habit is set of if you want to drink more water, scatter, scatter water throughout the house so that it's not this thought process of it's too hard. I'm not going oh, to get, get up and get water yeah. now. Yes. I'm not doing it. Right. So sc- scatter some water bottles throughout your house until we get into the habit, the ritual of drinking more water. So then that way, okay, I always have a water bottle by my bed and my seven day pill organizer is by my bedside. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I see the visual cue of my pill organizer. I remember to take my nighttime pills. Mine are on the counter in the kitchen where I pack his lunch every morning. So mine are in a green seven day organizer that is all, and it's like bright green and it's always in my work bag. And then I, that is one part of the things of when I take my laptop out of my bag and put it on its stand at work, I take my pill organizer, I open the day that it is, dump them and I put them on a little pill dish that's on top of my desk. So that's when I'm doing sessions or whatever, it's a visual reminder because I'm always coming back to my desk. Mm-hmm. It's a visual reminder that I see those pills there and I just grab one and take it, whatever vitamin that it is. Does that make sense? Yep. When I need to refill my seven day organizer, I go and put my green seven day organizer right on top of my counter that is in front of the drawers that all of my vitamins are in. Yeah. So that it's the visual cue of, I need to refill that. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I stack that with the habit of already coming home and putting my things away. So when I, I come organizers home, too, and if I need to refill a prescription and I don't put the bottles back in the jar where I keep correct. all my other ones, I leave them on the counter. So I know, Oh fuck, I have to refill that. Mm-hmm. It all sounds simple, you guys, but this is like methodical stuff that we've done for a very long time. So they're just ingrained habits at this point, but it takes work to get there. Absolutely. It's consistency. It's not effort. It's consistency. If you do all of the habits in one day, your brain and body are going to feel spent. Start with something small. Again, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it as we go, but start with something small. That is, again, if the effort exceeds the amount of um, or if the, what did he say? In response, it says the more physical effort that if the particular action requires more physical effort than you are willing to expend, you won't do it. Mm-hmm. So make it easy. Make it like easy. When people want to start working out. I say, don't try to start to work out for an hour every single day. You're going to set yourself up to fail. Two minutes. Let's start with two days a week, maybe, and not mm-hmm. for an hour. Do something that you think is feasible. That doesn't mean that you're failing because you're comparing yourself to the fucking fitness influencer on Instagram. It means that you're trying and what works best for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, if you want something more consistent, okay, 10 minutes a day, mm-hmm. that's it. Something, something that is so easy. That's going to set that habit that we don't have to worry about this. Well, now I'm sore and I'm tired and I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I couldn't do it. When you're trying to set a habit of waking up earlier, it's five minutes at a time mm-hmm. per week. Mm-hmm. I'm, you don't just jump an hour. It's mm-hmm. per week. Yep. Okay. So how to design your environment for success, creating obvious visual cues. So putting pills by your bed, if you want to drink more water, like he said, fill up a couple of bottles of water and place them in obvious areas, make the cue big and part of your everyday life. The context of the cue is to stop thinking your environment is filled with objects, but rather relationships. Mm -hmm. So a woman could read on her couch and TV and hold on. I don't, I don't know what I meant by that example. So never mind. I'm not even going to go there. It says, it says woman could read on her couch. Guy could watch TV and eat ice cream on his couch. I guess it's the difference in what you're using. What you're that tying to the couch. Or what you're, right? yeah, like, what you're tying to the I couch. Am I doing something useful or am I doing something that's ineffective? Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes you need to start new habits in new environments. Sure. So he, he says, if we're trying to eat healthier, try the new try a new grocery store, right? If you're so conditioned to this grocery store and you know where you and go, where all the junk is or all the shit where, that you don't yeah. want to eat anymore. Yeah. Yep. Go to a new grocery store and figure out, okay, I have my list. I have my things go around, get your stuff and get out. Mm-hmm. And also he talks about, um, so sometimes people have houses and sometimes people have, you know, 300 square foot studio, one bedroom mm-hmm. apartments or not even a bedroom apartment, just a studio apartment. So he talks about using one space for one thing. So my bed is for sleeping. My yes. desk is for doing Do not my work, work from your bed. Mm-hmm. My desk is for doing my work. My um, coffee table is for, is for eating or what, you know, what my TV mm-hmm. tray is for eating, whatever, whatever that it is, just one space, one use. Okay. 
yeah, like he said, if space is limited, design activity. Mm -hmm. spaces. So chair for reading, couch for TV, sleep for bed, kitchen table for work. <clears throat> Creating a more disciplined environment is what will keep you from entertaining bad habits. So shock tactics don't work. If you can break a bad habit, you can break a bad habit, habit however you can't forget it. Reducing exposure to the cue that causes it is what helps. So for example, people who break the smoking habit don't forget that they used to smoke. Correct. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm reminded it's, every time I go to the doctor. Exactly. So it's easier to avoid bad habits. I just want to see, do I do this? Okay. Okay. So the flip, well, I'll do the summary of the first law and some steps. So do the scorecard, figure out what your habits are, then an implementation application. So I will, again, I will behavior at time in location and stack it to a habit. So the habit stacking is after current habit, I will new habit. Design your environment to work for you. Rearrange things if you need to. One space, one use. And then if we are attempting to break down negative habits, instead of making it visible, right? The easier it is making it visible, that visual cue, we're going to do it or potentially act on it. If we're trying to reverse that step, you need to make it invisible. Yep. So what does that look like? Invisible means review cue, remove cues for bad habits. So if when you, if you're a smoker, for example, and you have your pack of cigarettes in your lighter, and when you come in, you put them on the counter, put them somewhere else, put them in your pocket, put them in your work bag, leave them in your car, put your lighter in a different place. Mm -hmm. So start to make it difficult to be able to do this. Make it inconvenient because you're not going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I want to stop drinking, I don't have booze in the house. I have to go out and get it. I'm not going to want to go out and get it. Yeah, I'm not fucking doing that. Yeah. No. Okay. You can find, I think the, the summary of the first law steps, you can find at atomichabits.com slash cheat, cheat sheet. Okay. This might be a longer episode. But I was going to say, I don't know. You're not going to get done with step two in three minutes. So. Oh, there is no way. <laughs> so, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. And all that laughing. that we <laughs> Step two or law two, make it attractive. So the craving, make it attractive to you. Mm -hmm. So dopamine driven feedback loop. So the anticipation of a reward is what causes us to react. So when dopamine rises, so does motivation to react. I just don't feel motivated because mm -hmm. you don't have a dopamine driven feedback loop. So cravings, Activate a hundred percent of reward. I don't know what that says. Craving activates a hundred percent of reward, whereas achieving only activates 10%. So that makes sense. Okay. So the, the anticipation of potentially getting a reward, a reward is releasing the dopamine versus mm -hmm actually getting it or actually achieving is only giving us 10%. I used to re reward myself with Fabletics when I was first starting to work out of like, if I do all of my workouts for X amount of days, like I'll allow myself to buy myself a piece of workout clothing. And the driving factor that kept you for, to continue to show up is like, oh my gosh, the possibility of yep. new clothes versus when you're actually getting it. It's like, okay, this is exciting, but mm -hmm. it's like, oh man, what could I get? Yep. Okay. So desire is the engine that drives the behavior. So temptation bundling to make habits more attractive is where we're going. So you're more likely to find a behavior attractive if you get to do a favorite thing at the same time. So more probable behaviors will encourage less probable behaviors. So how to use temptation bundling with habit stacking? After current habit, I will habit I need. After habit I need, I will habit I want. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So for example, after I go to the bathroom, I will put on my clothes after I work out, I will eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It is important again, to go back to one and do the habit scorecard. So you can see the habits that are already there that are positive habits to you. Mm -hmm. 
we're not reinventing the wheel in the habit I want. The habit you want is to eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I even do that with like chores on weekends, right? Like after Mm -hmm. I do the dishes, I like, I stack it like that in terms of, and the end result is like, then I can finish reading this book or then I can finish watching this episode. Yeah. So habits that are normal in your social circle become more attractive. So everyone wants to belong and behaviors are attractive when they help you fit in. So we initiate the habits of three groups, the close, the many, and the powerful. So the close are, we pick up the habits of those around us. So study done over 32 years found if you have an obese friend, your chances of becoming obese went up 57%. That is a direct quote from his book. Again, First of all, not who the fuck's doing a study over 32 years? 32 years. But again, you have to show the longevity of people Jesus gaining weight. H. Christ. Wild. Yeah. So shared identity reinforces the habit. We share, we are athletes. So group fitness, that's the example of that. So it's talking about who are you surrounding yourself with? Again, what you feed yourself is visually is people around you is, you know, what you're reading, what you're studying, what you're working on, all of those things feed into this sense of identity and sense of self. Mm -hmm. And we have to be extremely diligent about that because it's sure you can surround yourself with a bunch of negative people, but you're working double time to continue the, the positive habits of, or the habit of thinking positively, or even just neutral of thinking neutrally, because you're surrounded by a constant reinforcement of like, this sucks. Everything's terrible. Mm -hmm. Case in point when Steph and I worked in the behavioral health hospital. I thought you were going to say case in point when Steph was really depressed and she was an asshole all the time. (laughs) <laughs> no, no. When we worked in the behavioral health hospital, we were oh, surrounded yeah. by negativity, and Constantly. negativity gets negativity. And anybody and who was positive, we were like, "Go oh, fuck yourself." Like- I was like, "Okay, Susie smiles, you fucking <laughs> dick." Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, be very wary of who you surround yourself with. Yep. The many. So, when you are unsure how to act, we follow the group. So the reward of being accepted is more desirable than the reward ro- than the reward of doing okay hold on Blah. reward of being accepted is more desirable than doing what is better. So it is it is more not more easy. It's easier to do what the group is doing mm-hmm. and follow versus standing out and having that like why are you being like that or like what's going on. So it's also kind of like being this- sober and being out with people who drink. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So I view this as the the thought process of like. When you're friends with somebody for so long and you've kind of gone your separate ways, but you still are friends with that person. However, there's behaviors maybe that you're like, I don't really want to participate in that. Correct. So you're, it's, you're going to be placed in more vulnerable conversation moments. If you're doing this of the many, because they're wanting you to follow the group and the new habits that you're creating, you don't want to follow the group anymore. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So there's going to have to be that thought process. Like for example, being sober. So not even from an addiction standpoint, just somebody who's like, you know what? I just really don't want to drink anymore. Okay. Completely fine. The, the many where it's very, especially where we live, very socially acceptable to drink. A lot of the activities or fests or things revolve around drinking. Mm-hmm. So then it's, well, why don't you want to drink? And it's just this constant. Yep. They look at you like you're weird. Yeah. Like you had three eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the last group, the powerful. Once we fit in, we want to stand out. We intimate, we What is the word I'm looking for? It's not intentionally. No, I don't know what you're trying to say. When you copy someone, when you copy what somebody's doing. Imitate. Yes. Oh, that is what that word. (laughs) My handwriting is so bad in here. We imitate. I was like, Mara, you did not spell that word right. (laughs) Yes, I did. We intimidate the people. We in help me. Imitate. Imitate. Keep wanting to say intimidate. Intimidate. (laughs) Imitate. (laughs) Not even a word anymore. (laughs) <laughs> the people we envy. So uh, if a habit can get, if a habit can get us approval and praise, we find it attractive. We're also motivated to avoid behaviors that lower our status. Um, 
i.e. we'll mow our lawn because we don't want to be considered a slab, especially if you live in an area that has like HOA Mm -hmm. policies or fees or something where everyone's like this to me speaks to my brother-in-law, not that he thinks that he's going to be a slab, but like, it's that like, well, they're mowing their lawn. So now I have to go mow my lawn again. And it's Mm -hmm. like, sometimes in the summer, he's out there like three, every three days. And I'm like, life is just revolving around mowing Mm -hmm. this lawn. It's a no for me. So When we're thinking about imitating the habits of these three groups, the close, the many, the powerful, we need to be very cognizant of what groups we're placing Mm. ourselves in, surrounding ourselves with, and wanting to be like. Yep. Because this can go real negatively if we're like, even for example, the powerful. So we, we continue the behavior that gets reward and praise. So Mm -hmm. for some reason we're sassy as hell to someone and rude and whatever. And someone's like, yes, girl. So you stood up for yourself. No, you were just being a dick. Like there's Correct. plenty of ways to be assertive versus being an asshole. Then it's like, you'd continue to behave like an asshole because people liked it, but mm-hmm. does that feel good. No. So a craving is a specific manifestation of a deeper underlying motive. So it latches onto underlying motives. Habits are modern day solutions to ancient desires. So this is where he talks a little bit about, um, things that are predispositioned in our brain because of evolution. Yeah. Kind of like the one episode that we talk about um, with Carl Lowenthal of Unfuck Your Brain, mm-hmm. the um, ghost patterns of mm-hmm. fixation and anxiety. I love that episode because it just brings another, another layer of understanding to why we do what we do. Yep. So life is predictive, not reactive. I think that's what that word says. So how to make habits that are, how to make habits that are hard. So he talks about how to do things that are hard. So his phrasing, one of them is, is you don't have to do something you get to. So removing this thought process of, well, I have to work out. No, no, no. You get to work out. Well, I have to eat healthy. I get to fuel my body. I, um, I have to run this race on Saturday. I get to run this race on Saturday. Uh, th- these things, like Steph said, it's not rocket science. These mm-hmm. things are not like life-changing, groundbreaking new things. You have to understand the importance of the way that you speak to yourself, the things that you write down, like that, that f- what is feeding into who you think you are or who you want to be. Like those things are so important. If you continue to speak to yourself that way, that's how your unconscious brain internalizes it, solidifies it, and then spits it out as a belief. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Jess Sims, one of the Peloton instructors, every single fucking workout. She says, you don't get to do something or you don't have to do something. You get to do something. She is, it is a constant reminder. So again, instead of saying I have to save money, it's, it's that you're increasing your spending power for the month by saving money this month. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. That's dumb. Basically what it breaks down, breaks down to is positive habits equal positive feelings and bad habits equal negative emotions. Okay. So the summary, oh, I was like, I'm not too far off, but it's, yep. (laughs) So the summary of the second law is use temptation bundling by pairing an action you need to do with an action you want to do. Join a culture where your desired behavior is the norm. Example, you want to work out more. So I am an athlete and do a group fitness class because all of those other people are solidifying this new habit that you want to do because you're watching other people do it. So that falls into the many. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then create a motivational ritual by doing something you enjoy before a difficult habit. So in that sense, I like when I wake up in the morning and I'm done getting dressed and whatever, I always review my finances in the morning on a daily basis, even if it's for like three to five minutes and like paying bills and transferring things, because that's a habit that has turned into now over the five, six, seven years I've been doing it, that has turned into a really positive moment for me. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So by, by doing that, I'm doing this thing that I enjoy before going downstairs and working out. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. You're like, mm-hmm, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I have to pee so fucking bad. Dude. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. How to break a bad habit. You reframe your mindset. 
So highlight benefits of avoiding bad habits. So how to break it instead of this craving and making it desirable, you make it undesirable. So moving things around, um, God, I'm blinking it inconvenient, but I think that's the next one. Yeah. That's the reverse of the third law. Make it easy or make it inconvenient. You have to make it disgusting mm -hmm. or undesirable. I we'll get think. there. Yeah, I was. We'll talk. We'll talk a little bit yeah. more about that because I don't want stuff to be your pants. Okay, mm -hmm. so <laughs> mm -hmm. you can find us at rewriting her story podcast at gmail.com and on Instagram and Instagram and YouTube. It's at rewriting her story podcast. Steph is the spooky therapist. And I am at BEA underscore XO 11. Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>